Do you need to check your notes or anything? Do you what have notes? notes? I, notes. <laughs> I never have notes. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, we're rolling. Go ahead. Silence. Three, two, one. It goes beyond just what the game type is into there's a few different types of players. There's the players that are there for the game, and there's the players that are there for themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody wants yeah. to be that hero. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what they pay for. And Contours and, and GoPros have just made it even for. worse. Yeah, but yeah. I think it, that, that feeds into uh, another topic that we should probably touch on is, you know, everyone's talking about squad leaders. You know, 12-year-old, you know, um, fat boy, you know, ice cream sandwich, leading all the squared away operators. Right. So... <clears throat> that comes down to authority. You know, is it perceived authority or legitimate authority? So in some cases I've seen in the past with some event promoters is there's essentially a uh, survey you take when you sign up. So, you know, you punch really? in. Wow. Yeah, you punch in all your info. I've never seen that. that. Yeah, and then there's a the survey. Idea. It's like, well, do you want to eat in the field? Or do you want to, you know, take a break? Or do you want to... Eating snack meal soup. Okay. All right, click this. Do you like using GPS? Do you like using a radio? Okay, click this for, you know, hardcore Milsim. And so basically they could uh, separate, <laughs> yeah. separate and deviate uh, all these players. So they're like, okay, so you want to be a shooter. Right. So you want to run out and shoot. Okay, you want, you know, you've got somewhat of a skill set, but you're learning. Okay, we'll throw you in this group. You are an elitist prick, and we have a special home for you in hell. So... <clears throat> yeah, one of those. <laughs> And um, then, you know, they can identify those and then other people who feel that they could lead. So obviously there's a lot of people that do feel that they can lead, but they have to have the credentials to back it up. And then that's how you separate the wannabe leaders from the actual leaders by a tricky little survey, which I've really only seen that once or twice and would probably like but, to see it more. But leaders or not, you know, you know, what, what Frank was saying was, you know, you got the rock star mentality. Mm -hmm. So you have... Tons of people that will lie or say they can lead or think they can or lead think they can. or honestly believe they can, that can't. Right. Yeah. Usually, you know, my experience is usually the guys that, that do lead and do do a good job really don't want to do it. No, it's just because they, they have to. Yeah. You know, American Milson kind of did a, what I perceive as the best. They have the A, B, and C bubbles. They got a big bubble of pellet slingers. They let do their pellet slinging bullshit. And they got yeah. their B guys, which they try to cater to a little bit better, a little more high speed, a little more standards hold up. And they got the A guys, which are doing their damn missions and so forth through. So they're trying to cover as many bases as they can in one instance. Doing some but is it exactly. a pyramid scheme? Well, no, well <laughs> the problem is, is you know, we get the same problem we had at Broken Home where some people feel like they've paid their money and they got reeled back even though they yeah. spent their money. It's like, I spend my money, I, I should never get real back, I should never get harnessed in. Then you look at the responsibility of the people running the game. Well, you're destroying these guys and they're having a shitty time, they paid money too, they need to have a good time also. So they're trying to balance it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, so what happens? Who's doing getting hurt? Well, who's getting hurt? The, the, the player, actually. Absolutely. Because the player that paid his money and got his ass kicked, even if the game rebalances, he still got his ass kicked and he's still all sour about that. And then the player that got pulled back, they're sour about that now because even if the game rebalances the game, and even if they smoke these guys at the beginning, when they get rebalanced again, they go, okay, so we'll just do this again. And yeah, but see, then there's the, the same, nobody same, gets nobody the same gets problem. You've got a whole bunch of guys that want to do a pounding. They want to pound somebody. They want to beat somebody. Both, both sides want to win. You might, you, you might as well, you might as well, you know, go to a playground, and pick the retarded kid, and beat the hell out of him. That's what I feel. I don't. I, I would want to have the yeah. hardest fight I've ever had. Yeah. You, well, you do exactly. Right. So okay. So, so if like, restrictions were placed on me, which these game hosts do, if they do it responsibly, they place restrictions on me to make it harder for me to achieve my objectives. I think that's absolutely perfect. I'll I mean, take that. Okay. Magazine I'll, restrictions. Uh, magazine. Yeah. Whatever it is. Magazine restrictions. You can't. Even even yeah. messed up restrictions. Even you know what? You guys are all dead. Go back. As long as it's done to enable you to have to fight harder mm. to achieve your objective. The thing is, though, is, is is that we get this whole like customer entitlement idea of no one actually wins. When someone's getting crushed, we reel right. these guys back. Mm -hmm. And the guys that won, they go, well, we won on a technicality, we and we feel good, but we didn't. We, we, know, we know we actually didn't win. The guys that did win, they're like, the, which are the better, obviously the better players, because they smoked those dudes. They're like, why should we come back? If we're gonna spend all of this time. Preparation. We're, we're, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was so impressed that ECR managed to come up with eight consecutive training weekends in the eight weeks prior to in-state Route 19. Yep. And they worked their asses off, and I was at some of the, most of us were at some of those, 
You know, we worked our asses off. You know, guys spent money on vehicles and equipment and weapons and night vision and all this crap. Um, you know, so they, they, they put the time, they put the training, they put the technical background, they put the kid into it, and they got themselves all ramped up as best as they could, got themselves all worked up into their frenzy of performance, got ripped on field fuel, went out there, <laughs> that's my product placement, Florin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> went out there, rolled and smoked the opposition like a big fat <laughs> joint, and then we lost. <laughs> Yeah, but like, what's, what, the, what's the incentive what, what, to go what, what, put that kind of energy into it again if you're it's well, like, well then they need what the, then they have to roll back because you can't just let one side get pounded because then people that have the ability to, to learn and grow are going to say F the sport and walk off right. they're going to they're not going to care they're not there has to be acceptance place you can't I mean seriously how fun is it just to beat somebody in the ground it sometimes you're like yeah we beat the hell out of them but then what's our point? What is going to ever event and beat him? I want to yes. challenge. I mean, when I walk in, when I want, when I no, walk no, I want to challenge event, too. I want to challenge. You're right. I want to challenge too. And we're not going to get a challenge mm -hmm. if you cater to the guys. Go. Oh well, you. Everyone got to win actually. Well, I mean, what well, you, guys you guys are going to win. Right. You guys right, are kind of right. touching I want on. Fight. I want to fight. These, that makes me have to. Win. These guys lost. Right. So go the hell home. Man up. Train. Buy crap. Get vehicles. Get anti tank launchers. Come out and push it in for ECR the next time. That's right. Kind of what Eric was saying. But that's saying. not what happens. Eric was talking about those bubbles, and those bubbles are just something that happens because you know a hosting company needs to obviously cater to as many airsofters as possible. And I'm I'm using the term airsofters because in the end you have recreational people that play milsim right. games, and you have those guys that are squared away. And then you have those guys that are kind of in between where they want to be squared away, but they don't necessarily have the means to really do it. They have the motivation. Yeah. And you have all of those bubbles. They have the tools. Well, what you're kind of talking about is more of a niche where you have all of those guys that are squared away on the same field because then you don't have to cater that. And something that you're kind of talking about is making it so that the rules cater to the advanced guys so that it's not necessarily ripping them off the field, but they're still able to play, you know, despite... Uh, magazine restrictions, maybe a respawn restriction. You know, they're still on the field playing. It just it depends on how you a structure the game, and b who's attending that event. You know, a, a faded giant is catered to those guys that are squared away, versus yes. yep. you know an that. end state which the admission's a lot lower, the AO is a lot easier to get onto and play with. It's it all depends on <laughs> what you want to attend. You. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, two Can't points. Kill you. Two points with the, uh, we'll use uh, in-state uh, Route 19 as an example. So you're saying the guys who get ready, the guys who get pummeled. Some people don't realize that getting that many vehicles and that much equipment to an event costs a lot of money. So is it right for uh, event staff to intervene? 